So if you guys have been following along on our adventure, we are turning this kitchen, which has a 15 year old countertop into a rustic renovation with a brand new live edge. But you also know that this thing didn't go in anywhere near as planned. And so this is where things really go south on us in this video. In fact, what happens is our first coat goes on amazing. Our second coat completely turns into a disaster, forcing us to go backwards more than we go forward and spending days to sand it off. Well, I wouldn't call this down to square one, but I sure wouldn't call this taking two steps forward without taking one step backward. But the third coat and the finished coat turns out absolutely gorgeous. So today, you're gonna learn how to actually repair a countertop like this or any surface if you have a, happen to have a problem with it. And we're just gonna show you the ways that we work through it to end up with results like this. So what are we waiting for? Let's get into it. This one. It all depends some, on what's it's got some character left in it. It's big. Frankie and I are already looking at our next project. And what we're trying to figure out is we want to take a full log and turn it into a sink. But you guys are here to see what we do with this countertop. We wrapped that up a few weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think of that? It was a challenge. I mean it was worth the challenge to do it, but it was tough. It was tough. Um, it was it's tough. something I wouldn't attempt to do again if I didn't have to. Okay. <laughs> there was a lot of days, guys, where Frankie just had to walk away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It just it got, gets to your person, you know. It's just Yeah. Plus, just the cost of things got to where it hurt me. What do you think? Ooh. I pass it this way, maybe, where you're standing. Yeah, let's toss it down. Ready? Yeah. That's that's a cool piece. Look at that. Yeah, it's got a knot touch, in it. You could even hollow this out for a, a towel or whatever. Okay, so that's got a knot. This could be the sink yeah. basin right there. Yeah, let's show these guys what we're thinking about doing. Actually, I'd put the sink up here. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. Okay, okay, yeah. On this countertop, you guys are gonna watch. What Frankie just said, that was a nice way of putting it. Basically, he thought it sucked. You know, in a way, yeah. It turned out sweet. I mean, it turned out nice and everything, but a lot of, a lot of, a lot of headaches. <sighs> a lot more work than we thought. But before we pour, I'm gonna go over it with uh, the searchlight. Now I'm using, this is actually the under hood light. This is actually a mechanics light from Milwaukee, whatever you guys wanna use. This is an important step because right before you pour, it's too late if you notice you have a speck of dust on the countertop because once you pour, you're gonna look at that speck of dust forever. So I go over this, like every little thing. You guys probably aren't going to be able to see these and I wouldn't see these unless I had a light to actually look for it. But everything that you don't get, you notice later on, you're gonna notice for the rest of your life. So this is the first coat and that white plastic bucket, perfect for this. The squeegee worked great. We used a brush on the vertical surfaces, not a foam brush. On the second coat, we changed things up and everything sucked. I mean, we used gray buckets instead of white buckets and I don't know what difference that make, but trust me, the second coat didn't go good and I would never want to repeat it. We used foam brushes on the vertical surfaces and somewhere along the line, a weird chemical reaction happened and wrecked our countertop. So we're not repeating that mistake again. All right, real quick guys, I think one of the things we're learning while we're doing this is on a big project, teamwork is absolutely necessary. It's taken all three of us to do this job. And the second thing is this light. Take this. 
is absolutely necessary because this is what we're finding bubbles with and what we're doing is going over the countertop and then the first coat it's sucking it's good, everything it's up and then we've got to use this light to locate bubbles and pop them so you can see we got some bubbles right there we got a bubble right there and we got to get those popped I'll get them popped. Frank, uh, Frankie's starting. And the torch is the way to do it. Don't use a heat gun. I don't think I tightened it that tight. And there's one, and this one's going to continually bubble right here. Yeah. yeah. It does pop them. Mm hmm. So the torch is the way to go on this. Absolutely. Nick is a dry spot right there. If you can just kind of maybe put something there, and if you can, you can. I got it. That's fine. There's not much left. Over here? Right. There you go. Yep. And then if in the light, I can see the right there. It's too dry. It's super it's sticky. It's like thick, super glue. Yeah. It's just it's too much. This one's going to set up. But it's okay. As long as you got a first coat on it, we can you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is help. Try to get something right you see right there. Okay. Right. It's like concrete now. Okay, so that gave us our working time. All right. <laughs> I'm supposed to be just doing the camera. <laughs> <laughs> How's that work? Your yeah. hands are sticky. I'm yeah. Real You're sad. covered. <laughs> well. That's teamwork. So I don't think we could have done it if you didn't get up nope. and help us. No way. Just thank you, Ned. By one guy, not alone. You and I could have done it, but not nearly as well. Yeah. Good help. Two it's spots better. gave us a problem, Frankie. Well, and this one just keeps growing bubbles as all, and just keep popping them as they as they come out. So we got bubbles that See, they're starting to come out now again. All right. See? Just took it out. And then over here there's a spot. I don't want to see that. Right there. See? The bubble right there. Because if it be in the crack, there's air in there and it's forcing it out. Then it's going to take maybe a little bit of time to kind of keep an eye on them spots. So the first coat is down, and before we can do the second coat, we gotta do a little bit of prep work. And that means going over the surface with a 600 grit sandpaper to remove any imperfections. Now after we've done that, we're gonna to wanna to clean up that surface using isopropanol alcohol, or what's the other compound, Frankie, do you remember? Nope, that's all I used on Acetone, was it acetone? I think you couldn't, that's what it said, yeah. Okay, so the, some of the issues that we have here, now you can see it while Frankie's working on it, is a little bit of alligatoring where the um, compound came down and over the side, it didn't get even coverage. And that's always, the vertical surfaces are always a little tougher to get good coverage on. But we also had a few spots actually in the flat surfaces here, you can see that uh, it just, we didn't get perfection on the first coat. And that kind of just goes without saying, you probably are not gonna get a perfect first coat. Here's another example where you can see just a little bit of the flaws. Now, because it's dusty, you can see them better, or you gotta hold the light over them to see them. But after we use the 600 grit sandpaper, we're ready to go for a second coat. Okay, look at the, so you can see it's steaming. That is just the chemicals, let's see. What is the temp on this reading? 235 degrees. <laughs> no, no, I never got that hot the first minute. No, something is going on. I don't know if it's the that's having a reaction with the bucket. Like if you touch that bucket, that's going to cook it. I would get it off the stove in case that bucket melts. You know what I'm saying? So we don't just have it all over the place. And then we'll be in a disaster. It'll be in the stove, uh, everywhere. Why is that doing that? 
Because right from the beginning, it didn't want to work right, but it was odd. Yeah, that's not working quite the same as it did the first time. <laughs> no. And all the other times we used it, is it? No. No, it's because, look at me, we got this funky... So you can actually see that on camera, which is bad. Yeah. When you can see it on camera, you know that it's not working quite the way you want it to. We had a bad chemical reaction in our glaze coat, which made it lay uneven on our second coat during our second coat application process. So instead of lying flat like it was supposed to, it kind of created kind of a rivel, a, you can see it, a yeah. ripply river effect. The high spots and lows. Yeah, and so it didn't work right. In fact, the batch heated up on us in the bucket and we had to take it outside and put it in a snowbank because it got to 235 degrees and we didn't feel like having the bucket melt and dump stuff all over the house. One fun thing after another, it's all I could say. Well, it's just coming out. I mean, it come out nice. Is it coming off okay? Yeah, I mean, this is all flat again. Is it? Yeah. Okay, so you're so you're using what grit, though? I started out with uh, 80 grit. Okay. But I'll, I'll work my way down. What are you at now? It's still 80. Still 80. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit of a scary process. If you guys do have problems in your countertop, it is scary because that 80 grit... It's just like destroying the finish that you worked at putting on, but you gotta get. Gotta get a level. Gotta get that crap out of there. And uh, then now I'll wipe it down with alcohol to get some of that off of there, and then I'll sand again. Back up. We started with an 80 grit. We're gonna go to a 120, a 220 grit. Then we're gonna go to a 400 and a 600 grit, and then wipe it with alcohol. And what you see Frankie doing right now is wiping down in between with alcohol. You sage on your sanding pads and so here you here's unsanded and here's sanded so you but can we're not down to the wood we're actually just sanding the poly and yeah yep. The epoxy. yep so well i wouldn't call this down to square one but i sure wouldn't call this taking two steps forward without taking one step back frankie i think if the third pour goes as bad as the second pour i'm done we're done <laughs> I have to agree with you. Little has to be good enough. Yeah. That's it. Well, it's got to be better because it's going to be completely smooth. You got to get some rollerblades. Yeah. I mean, it's just got to work better. So part of the thing is when you're sanding this down, it's also gooking up the tools. So that's a brand new sander, and it's gooking up the connections in the batteries and inside the the, the actual sander itself. Right, Frankie? Yeah. So this stuff is nasty. It's just nasty to get rid of. I mean, it's, it's just like that everywhere. Okay, guys, what we're looking at is we've now sanded off the entire second coat all the way down. So there's still a first coat left on. The entire second coat got removed. And that was about two and a half days worth of work. All right, here's a fun side note. Frankie's been having nightmares about this <laughs> second pour, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> he said you were dreaming about it last night. Yeah, I didn't. I don't. I don't want to repeat what I dreamt, but <laughs> I don't want it to happen either. Yeah. All right. So what we're doing different on this one is we went back to these white pails. Um, I mean, we, we alcohol wiped the squeegees. We're going back to using a brush because on the second coat, we use these foam brushes. We have no clue what went wrong. We don't know what went wrong or why, but whatever it is that happened on the first coat worked and the second coat didn't. So we're doing the first. So okay. we're doing everything the same as the first coat. We got two minutes and 33 seconds. And then we pour from one to the other. 
to the next one. Hey, you got your heat gun? So this is pour number three. And uh, we've got everybody working on this thing together, trying to get her right. So far it's going much better than pour number two, isn't it? It's better to have too much and pull it off than yeah. it is than to have too little and then try to connect it up, isn't it? Yeah. It's one of the things that I think... But this is still leveling out. I mean, it wasn't even leveling out last time at this point. No, it wasn't. I mean, we were, we were screwed at this point already at last time. Like you say, this is all leveled. When you look back, even the places I had a rough spot, well, like there, but... I don't know, we'll just live with them. They're my air bubbles now though, we can't deal with. Um, I'm just gonna set that there. It's junk anyways. Yeah, a lot more leveler than what it was. But yeah, this side looks nice. So this second pour went a lot better than the first second pour. That makes any sense, but... That's a piece of dirt right there, I think. That one there, I think, is that air bubble or is that a dirt? See how these ain't going? I don't know if I missed a spot right there, or they just... You no, know, you couldn't have missed a spot. I don't think so. But the heat actually is helping it level out like it's supposed to. But it ain't fair, I don't know. They're not popping on me. Look at that. They're not popping? No. Nope. Nope. Oh, some are. These are over here. But... All right, there they are. There okay. some are. All right, yep, now they are. Ah, some of them don't want it though. No, it's a little, a little thick. Maybe it has to work its way out, but yeah, they're starting. Well, even though this originally started out, what we thought was going to be a five, maybe seven day project ended up taking us over three weeks to complete. The results speak for themselves. Now, I hope this three part video series has helped you guys out. Let me know what you think of topics like this in the comments down below. If you wanna see us tackle more projects that really are outside of our comfort zone, and learn along the way as we do it, we'll be glad to. In fact, one of the things I think we're thinking about doing coming up is a stone sink, possibly a, a river table, and maybe whatever else you guys suggest in the comments down below, so let me know. But we are going to also be getting back into the landscaping and construction videos. I know that's why you guys are here, and I'm not going to disappoint you. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. I hope you picked up a few trip, tips and tricks along the way. And if there's anything that you guys can tell me about the process to improve it in the comments down below, I'm all ears. God bless you guys. Go get them. Tonight or something, I'll start debarking it or something. You know, no, just leave to... the bark on. Oh, you don't want the bark on, not in the house. I don't know if we want it. Yeah, we'll, we'll poly over the top of it. Yeah, I guess, but leave some like, no, we want that.
the mold, the, the, the yeah, it's gonna stuff. get sealed in there. Okay. Yeah, that's that's all character. The only thing that kind of sucks is where we grabbed it. Or yeah, is that where a chainsaw hit? Yeah, but what says what says well you can't do that? Well, this side's missing the bark. This is the side that's missing the bark. Well, not really. It's missing some, but it all depends on which way it would face. You know. That is our piece. Dude, that thing has got so much if character. If you have this off to the side, you can even uh, store your soap and towel in here, you know, with this little cup deal. Oh, that is a cool piece. That was meant for a sink. And I bet that's almost sink height, too. Or, or taller, yeah. We could cut it down so it would sit decent, yeah. So, we gotta, so what we'll try to do is use the whole piece yeah. and just hollow out the top. For the sink, if something screws up. We can always cut off the top and put it work down because it is high. It's you know it's high now. I is think it, it's too high. Now. You think it's a little too high? Well, we'll oh, yeah, measure it's it. It's got to be. It's got to be what? One, two, three, four, three and a half, four feet. It's got to be four feet. A bit. You know. You Wonder what kind one. of wood that is. That's maple. Two. Is that maple three, or oak? Four. No, this is. Oh yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think it's oak. Maple. I'm not a tree man. That is. I burn it. That's the. Well, what about this one? This one's cool. See, but that's got all the bark off from it. I don't like that look. It doesn't have nearly the character. I don't. Uh, yeah. Once you, once you, you know, the stuff that the bark is off. A guy could do a Leo, even a um, a light sand blast, you know, with the real silica sand. Yeah. And you bring the wood right back to it. Huh. Or even sand it, and it wouldn't take, wouldn't take long to sand a piece like that. Even this. You know, bring the wood color right back. That ain't that ain't a problem. That part of it. Yeah, I think that's the one. That's good. oh, look at this piece right next to it. Look at this thing. Which one? Right here. That. Look at Why? that twist in that, Frankie. You see that? Oh, oh. that has oh, yeah. got that's a cool good. twist, doesn't it? Yeah. Wonder how we could use that. Oh, well, you're gonna need a towel rack. No good wood goes to waste. That's what she said. <laughs> well, there's, there was some nice, nice wood in there. I mean, there was some nice trees. I'm laughing at my own joke. <laughs>